Good morning, good morning, good morning. Guess what? It was the painting and messed my beard up and I had to cut it. I look weird. And beard and weird rhymes. Now, you know, I like, I can't wait to have a long beard. I don't think my beard could grow that long. But I envy those who have like that rugged look, man. Like, like that real man look. Now, some people say my voice is too soft for a rugged beard. You know, you got to have a deeper voice, you know, like um, to have a rugged beard. A matter of fact, when I drive up to McDonald's, this happened to me every time. They say, drive up, ma'am. So I got a soft voice. And sometimes I even try to roughen it up. Let me get a number one. They still say, drive up, ma'am. But you know, this ain't about beauty or anything because I'm not blessed in that area. But what I'm blessed with is sharing God's word and to bring him honor and glory. Can I get an amen? All right. I want to take a look at Proverbs 31. We know we start from verse 10, especially those who are looking for a wife. You know, you hear people say, yeah, I'm still on verse 10. I haven't made it to 11 yet. No. Who can find? I haven't find her yet. And um, we always hear verse 10. As a matter of fact, we even know it by memory. Who can find a virtuous wife? Now, um, in our time, you know, the word wife was instituted by God. Marriage is an institution by God. So the idea of a wife should be a virtuous woman, a woman of worth, a woman of good character. That should be automatic. But in our time, we have to have add a lot of adjectives to describe these nouns. Like, if in, in our time, if I say I'm a Christian, the murderer is saying, I'm one too. The rapists, child molesters, the liars and thieves are saying, I'm a Christian too. I've been a Christian from I was born. So the word Christianity has kind of lost its meaning. So we have to do a similar thing here. Like I said, who can find a virtuous wife? We have to use words or adjectives. I hope I get that right. To describe these nouns like I'm a committed Christian. As a matter of fact, the word Christian means commitment. One who is committed to Christ. One who follows Jesus Christ. But because of the culture and the time we're living in, we have to add these. I'm a good Christian. I'm an honest Christian. I'm a Christian that followed Jesus Christ. Um, I'm, I'm telling you, it's just living in this time, that's what we have to, we have to do. You know, um, so now, now there's certain things I may not agree with. There's no such thing as a black Christian or a white Christian. When it comes to Christianity, that um, who you are should not change what Christianity is. I may say I'm a Christian first. Christian is always first. That is black. Or I'm a Christian that is white. Or I'm a Christian that is Spanish. I shouldn't say I'm a black Christian because there's no such thing. I'm a Christian that is black, totally different. Okay, that's beside the point. But here, we always start from verse 10. Who can find that wife? Now, we say wife. Now, in our time, we may say girlfriend. 
The Bible does not teach girlfriends. The Bible does not teach domestic partners. The Bible teach wife. So if you say I'm dating this person to see if it works, God doesn't acknowledge things like that. God is looking at you, what are you doing? What does that mean? Now if you say with the permission of the parents, I'm getting to know this person without any sort of sexual activity, no kissing, no nothing. You talking and you um, getting to know this person, maybe through the church with, um, with a lot of accountability, then that is different. Um, but to say, I'm dating this person, we're going movie, we sleep around, we do all this. God is like, <laughs> don't bother to pray. You need to repent of these things. This doesn't count. What count is marriage. What you're looking for if this person is a wife. So we want to get that out the way right then and there. Now. We always start from verse 10 down to the end. Who can find a virtuous woman for her words is for about Ruby, the heart of her husband, save the trust in her? We always start from there. But let's start from verse 1 because verse 1 says a lot. Now, let me see what version am I using? New King James. Let me use the... Do like the King James, New King James, ESV, kind of the words are just more specific. But let's go to the NLT, the New Living Translation, and take a look at this. New Living. Here it goes. Hear this now. It said, the sayings, the sayings, of King Lemuel contain this message which his mother taught him. So now here, King Lemuel, who's a king, his mother is teaching him what kind of woman to look for. So you may say that I'm only at verse 10. Who can find that woman? But as your mother taught you, not only by words, but by the way she carry herself. My mom did. My mom taught me what kind of woman to look for, mainly by the way she lives. And not only that, I'm surrounded, I grew up with a lot of women. You see them character here that is described in Proverbs 31. So now, the Bible clearly states, like, hey, you want that virtuous woman? You should be seeing that in your mother. Your mother should be teaching you that. But it's so unfortunate. We're living in a time where children is raising children. Um, we learn our, our what to look for, the kind of woman that we should desire from TV shows, and so forth. So here, when in verse 10, if I bring that to today's culture, you need to be, if you, if you want to desire to be married one day, you need to be a virtuous woman. They probably look at that. You talking about an Instagram model? You talking about a Jerry Springer all day sitting watching mother? You talking mothers who pick me up from school and they're texting while driving, trying to keep up with social media and don't ever ask me how my day is going. That's the kind of virtuous woman you talk, cause that's all most of these kids know. They don't know parents when they pick them up. Darling, sweetheart, how was your day? Who are your friends? They don't, they don't, a lot of them don't get that no more. Soon as a kid get in the car, that child is on their phone, mother's on their phone. No wonder they think Instagram models and 
all these music videos, um, um, women are the example of what to be like. That's why you see most of these little kids come with lashes so long if they blink too much, they fly. Because they don't have that example. It's like a domino effect. These same kids grow up and do the same thing. So now when you're looking for a virtuous woman, or you tell a child you need to be a virtuous woman, they don't know what that is. And if you ask a man, hey, I'm looking for a virtuous wife, they don't even know what exactly to look for because majority of them, if they don't have big butts, this killing body, they're not wife material. Now you see why the divorce rate is so high. And not only that, in the past 10 years, people don't desire marriage and children as much anymore. So you have people living together for 80 years. Now they're 95 and they're finally tying a knot. I think I want to marry you. And the next day they die. Because they wasted their time. It's like... But here, King Lemuel, mother, is going to teach her son what kind of woman to look for. Look what they say now. The sayings of King Lemuel. Now, King Lemuel is um, repeating what his mother um taught him. He said, Oh my son. Oh my son. Oh my son. Three times in verse two. In the and I um V, I think it says son of my um womb or something, but in each version it repeats it I think three times. He said, Oh my son, oh son of my womb, oh son of my vows. Let's look what the NIV said for a second. Yes, the NIV said, listen, listen, listen three times. Then when we go to the, um, let's look at the King James Version. The King Version said, what, what, and what? Three times. Similar words. Let's go back to the um, NLT. And in the NLT said, Oh my son, oh my son, three times. So here, oh my son, oh my, oh son of my womb, oh son of my vows. He said, Do not waste your strength on woman. And those who ruin kings. Who are those? Instagram models. Strippers. Gold diggers. You know, women who club all the time. Get wasted and get drunk. It clearly stated here. I didn't say it. I'm just repeating what God's words say because I'm not smart enough to write something like this. Only God is. It said here, do not waste your strength on women and those who ruin kings. And who do we know ruin kings, ruin um, um Great leaders, governors, and all kind of what? Prostitutes, Instagram models, strippers, loose women, women who have no kind of respect for themselves or their bodies. So don't think they're going to respect you. Run from them. Abstain from them. 
And look what it say here. Um, then it, it, it come down. We're going to skip verse 4 to 9. And it come down and said, this is what you need to look for. Again, I know I repeat myself a lot. Look at verse 3. Do not waste your strength on Instagram models. Do not waste your strength on Jerry Springer all day sitting um, woman. Woman who don't value work. Woman who don't take care of their home. Woman who as soon as their kids get in the car, they on their phone texting and driving and don't even communicate with their kids. They don't even know what their kids' homework is. They don't even know the PTA meeting that their kids are having. Their kids are the only one there who have no parents to support them in any kind of extracurriculum activities or um, what's going on in the school. No, they're home on, on social media. So these kids end up being raised by everything else from um, social media to their peers or whatever. This is the kind of, um, this is what raising do. These are the true parents to the kids. And most of the time, daddy ain't around. Maybe 90% of the time. So now, abstain from those women. But Richard, you judging. No, we judge all the time. If I say you're beautiful or you're handsome, that's judging. Don't tell me I can't judge. There's no way in the Bible say um, I shouldn't judge. Yes, there is said um, you shall not judge or, or, or you will be judged. Yes, but I could find your verse that said judge spiritually. You see, you don't even know what judging is. We have to start from there. Judging is, there's two ways to look at judging. When it said, when when it said in the gospel, thou shalt not judge, or you will be judged. He's talking to condemn a person. The judgment you have, you can't do. You, you cannot do that kind of judgment. Only God can. Only God can say, if you are black, you're going to hell. Or if you're white, you're going to hell. Or if you're Hispanic, you're going to hell. I can't judge like that. Because I don't know this person's future. I can't say because you're homeless, you're never going to mount out to be anything in life. No. Only God knows that person's future. God doesn't give me the authority to judge like that. So when he said, thou shalt not, don't judge to condemn. Don't judge a person's future. Don't think because they're black or they're white or they're whatever. They're going to turn out to be this. You have no right over a person's future. You may say, if you reject Christ and you die or Jesus should come back, you'll go to hell. But I can't say you're going to go to hell because I don't know your future. But I can judge and say um, that because you're not being obedient to the scripture, you're sinning. I can say that. Those are the kind of judgment that God allow me to do. I can say that your car is nice. That kind of judgment I can do. I'm judging to make a decision. Or to give you a perspective on the situation. So I could say this. Look at this. Got off the topic a little bit. So we know what kind of woman not to look for. Not to even be around because you can get sucked into their kind of lifestyle. Don't have them around you. Um, preach the gospel to them that Jesus save and go your way. Don't go and hang out with them. Um, your only obligation to them is to preach the gospel. Because you don't want those kind of women to suck you into a lifestyle that's going to ruin you. Now, 
So King Lemuel mom said to abstain from that kind of woman, but this the kind of woman here in verse 10 that you should look for. What does it say? Who can find a virtuous woman? A virtuous woman. A woman of good character. A woman who not only her words say what she is, but her lifestyle, the way she carry herself, the way she live tells it all. She's not just a talker, but she live what she say. My wife is like that. My mother is like that. I attend a church with women filled with a church with um, so many women with that kind of character. I have families who live this out. I'm surrounded with people that live this out on in their daily basis. They don't just talk. I'm a good woman. I'm a virtuous woman. No, they don't say I'm a good woman, then go strip half naked on Instagram or on um, social media. No, this ain't these kind of women. They live out what they say. They let their life preach to people, not just their words. So now she said, this is the kind of woman to look for, because look at this. She is more precious than rubies. So when you buy your wife rubies and diamonds and all of that, you don't have in your head that these diamonds and rubies and all that is more precious than your wife. It's really to remind her of what you are more precious than. So this diamond I'm giving you is a reminder that you're way more valuable than this. I want you to wear this as a reminder that you're more valuable than this. And this is what it said. She is more precious, more precious than rubies. But look at this in verse 11. Her husband can trust her. So uh, I don't have to go when I get home and I ask you, did you go anywhere? You said, no, I didn't go anywhere. So I'm feeling your, your car if it was hot to see if you're lying. I don't have to put a tracker on my wife. I don't have to do it. That's stress. Why do you want that? Because I can safely trust in her. I don't have to question her or anything like that. Her husband can trust her and she will greatly enrich his life. <laughs> It doesn't get any better than that. I'm going to tell you something you probably won't believe. Before I was married, I was being evicted every time. I couldn't keep a dollar in my pocket. Um, um, cars being repoed. Telephone always cut off. I mean, I had a new number every month. Um, my car's always breaking down. Um, I love to, to fish. I would, I, 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 a matter of fact, I like, I love fish tanks, like fish tanks. And I would pack my fish tanks, my fish tank, my fish is always dying before I was married. I couldn't keep a fish alive for nothing. <laughs> it's like nothing was working out until I met that virtuous woman. All of a sudden, I even forget to plug my fish tank in. All three weeks, my fish ain't getting no oxygen. When I go there, they're all alive and smiling at me. It's like, this never happened before. 
Man, I had cars. I could drive a car for seven days for the week, seven different cars. I'm, I'm here diagnosing cars with computers and all of that. Um, my phone been on for over 10 years. It's like, because she's, she will enrich you. It's not that you're using her. It's not that you're using her. She enrich you because now the money that you make, the money, I could make three times the amount um, of money my wife makes. But she, she teaches you how to use it. So even if it's just a little bit, you know that song where it said, little is much when God is in it? I could even say that about my wife. The little that we have becomes a lot because she learns how to enrich you. And that is true. I'm living that out. Then he said, she brings him good, not harm, all the days of her life. So the days of her life is to enrich him, to bring him no harm, and to do him good. But this is what amazed me right here. Verse 13. Look what it said. She finds wool and flock and busily spend it, spins it. She's like a merchant ship who bring her food from afar. She gets up before the dawn to prepare breakfast for her household and plan the day's work for her servant girls. She goes to inspect a field and buys it. With her earnings, she plants a vineyard. She's energetic and strong and hard worker. So she have her, hey, she have her household plans out before, um, before she gets up. When she gets up early in the morning so she could plan, okay, this is what my children are going to do. This is what I want my servants to help me with here or to do. She, she's on a plan. She makes sure her household is well taken care of. Not only that, she work willingly with her hand. In verse 13 and 14, she's like a merchant ship or a cargo ship who go out and get his stuff and sells it. She's not lazy. She's not lazy. She knows what she wants and she go out and get it and do it. She take care of her whole household. Trust me, she won't be texting when her kids get in the car. She gonna, um, um, she gonna want to know genuinely and lovingly how your day went. She's a prayer warrior. Things just happening and you're going through a hard time and you don't even know how you get out of these things because she's a prayer warrior. She's energetic. So she's not a only, nothing wrong with eating McDonald's, but she's not a seven days a week McDonald eater, Dunkin' Donut eater. She take care of herself so she's energetic. Tell you, I'm surrounded with not only my wife, my mom, and a lot of people from church, both in Miami and um, here in LaBelle. It's like my family. When I think about my family in New York and so forth, it's like, it's just amazing. Amazing. Aunts and uncles and both my mom's side and my father's side, you see this kind of character in them. And not only she invests, and that's what verse 16 is saying. She goes out, she goes to inspect a field and buys it. 
So verse 13, she works willingly with her hand. She sews and sells her things and then buy a field. Verse 16, she goes to inspect a field, buys it. With her earnings, she plants a vineyard. She's energetic and strong, a hard worker. Look at verse 18. She makes sure her dealings are profitable. She does not hear that her, her, her home girl is saying, man, you should, you, you should go do this over here. Uh, Johnny, Thomas, mom, cousin, daughter, um, stepdad, is investing in something. You should go try. No, she's not that way. She said, okay, before I deal, I'm going to examine this truly to make sure this is profitable. Her lamps burn late into the night. You know what that means? She will fill that lamp. You know, many of us don't know what that is. To make sure that people can see because once your light is on a lot of wild animals and insect would avoid coming to harm you so she makes sure the lights didn't go out it lasts long enough so now in verse um verse 19 it's her, her hands are busy spinning thread her fingers twisting fibers. She's always doing something. She extend a helping hand to the poor. So it's not only about her. She take care of her household first. Then she extend her hands to the poor and open her arms to the needy. She has no fear of the winter for her household. For everyone has warm clothes. She prepared for the winter. She could say, um, honey, go into the basement, left, the left door, go three, um, um, three shelves down. There's like 18 coats right there. She, she prepared. She knows where these things are to keep her house so warm. Look at verse 22. She makes her own bedspreads. She dresses in fine linen and purple gowns. Her husband. So not, not only that. She just don't throw on a bonnet. She dressed nice. So when her husband come home, she said, look at that. She fine. You know what I'm saying? She's not a, she's not a, um. A, a, a eyelash wearer. And if she do put those on, I guarantee you're going to look authentic like she was born with it. <clears throat> you know, it's not something she just took from some doll or some corner store and throw it on her eyelash. And like, my goodness, her eyes are blood red. What's going on with her? Sometimes you see these young ladies with these lashes and you said, man, I'm going to call 911. Your eyes are bleeding. So she, she knows how to carry herself. She knows what her husband like. Just like my wife, she knows I don't like that barnet stuff. It's like, I mean, if I had a trust, I'd burn every bonnet. I think that's what they call bonnet. You know, you see these young ladies come in Walmart with their bonnet and half naked, see through nightgowns. And it's like, man, how your husband tolerate that? But that's beside the point. That's just my personal. Preference. Again, she dresses in, verse 22, she dresses in fine linen and purple. Um, her husband is well known at the city gates where he sits with the other civic leaders. So her husband becomes popular because of her. It's like 
A man respect you when they know you have a good wife. Maybe 90% of the people that I know now would even probably talk to me. But because of having a good wife, that is possible. Like, hey, what's up, Richard? I didn't even know he knows my name. They respect you because you have a good wife. Then he say in verse 24, she makes belted linen garments and sashes to sell to the merchants. So she she makes stuff, she sells things. Now, may, sewing may not be her thing. It may be planting, it may be um, painting, whatever. Whatever her talent is, she use it. She use it. Verse 25, she's clothed with strength and dignity. Imagine that. She sews, but this kind of clothing only come from God. Verse 25, she's clothed with strength and dignity, and she laughs without fear of the future. People cry when they think of the future. Oh, I'm, I'm 40, I'm 30, I'm 20, I'm getting older. Um, I'm not doing anything with my life. And, oh man, what am I going to do? And blah, 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 and da, da, da. And you feel? But she laughs at the future because she knows who is in control. So she's prepared for the future. See, verse 26, when she speaks, her words are wise and she, and she gives instruction with kindness. So man, you could take that in so many different ways. When she speaks, her words are wise. She don't just splurge things out of her mouth. Oh, you an idiot. <laughs> you stupid. What's the definition of Stupid. I don't know, but I think you are the definition of stupid. It's like no wisdom. She's not that way. She chooses her words. And when she speaks it, it's with wisdom. And then it says she gives instruction with kindness. So now some of us may have wise words. You know, it would be better if you didn't sleep around and get impregnant every month. Maybe it would have been better if you just dedicate yourself to God and to, you know, let he prepare you. Some people give wise words, but you have some people who could give those same words, but with, without kindness. It would be good if you stop being a whore. Stop throwing your body to every Tom, Dick, and Harry who comes. You know, it's like, yeah, it's true to that, but do you have to say it that way? Do you have to? Can it be with kindness and care? The reason I'm speaking to you, I really want to see an improvement in your life. I really care about you. I'm not just speaking just to speak. And then in verse 27, she carefully watches everything in her household and suffer nothing from laziness. <laughs> oh my goodness, this even hit the nail on that. So, so eh, you know, those um, potatoes that I bought from Walmart last week is rotten. Why, why, why is rotten? Maybe you were watching Jerry Springer. Maybe you were watching Murray. Maybe you were on Facebook or social media all the time. You didn't see um, that, 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 that $60 salmon that you bought from Costco, for, not, for, not even farm raised. This is a real deal right here. Those salmons are um, 
wild caught. I mean, they went up in the mountains to get these salmon right here. It, it's not some filthy farm raised um, salmon. This real deal right here, 60 bucks for half a pound. That man, that's a real deal right here. Guess what? It's spoil. Why did the, that expensive $60 salmon spoil? Why? Because you were lazy. You were late, not lazy enough not to watch social media 24 hours a day. Next thing you're going to cry, oh, I have no food. I have no, 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 you had food. But just like it say here, nothing in our household suffer loss because of laziness. Those potatoes would have gone good with that salmon. With that wild caught salmon for 60 bucks. Some of us only make $10 an hour, so I have to work four hours to buy that salmon. And another probably half an hour to buy those potatoes. Now, the potatoes are rotten and all these flies are coming from it. Then not only that, some of them are growing. They, they become vines in your cabinet because of how long it's there. You got you to gotta, um, hire some wood cutters or get, rent some chainsaw to cut those potatoes down, those potatoes vines. Because they sat there so long till they become no good. Now they're compost. You suffer loss. Man, and not only that. That's four hours of work, almost five hours to get those potatoes and the salmon. And I'm hungry right now. Because that sounds like a good meal. So she's not that way. She knows what she bought. Man, right on the third shelf, all the way to the back, in the left-hand corner, I have a can of corn. The date on it is blah, blah, blah. She knows exactly what's in the left-hand corner, three shelves down, um, because she's on top of her game. She's on top of her game. So again, let's read that. It said, she carefully watches everything in her household and suffers nothing from laziness. So she don't lose anything. Her loss is minimal. She lost a potato. When she was picking it up, it accidentally fell into the one potato fell out the bag into a corner she didn't see, so she lost that one. But all 50 of the, of the other ones that was in the bag, bag end up in my stomach with a piece of sand. Then it said her children stand. Stand and bless her. In some version, it says, children call her blessed. Her husband praise her. Man, her husband get praise out in the street for her. Now, she get praise by her family. I mean, it's tough to get praise from your family. It's a tough thing. Mothers are trying to get praise and respect from their children. It's tough. So when your children, when your husband could say, man, I got a whew, amazing wife. That's a good woman. That's a good woman. Then there, are, then it said, there are many virtuous and capable Again, it said, there are many virtuous and capable women in the world, but you surpass them all. <laughs> it 
doesn't get any better than that. You surpass them all. Then he said here in verse 30, the benediction is about to be um, said. He said, charm is deceptive. And beauty does not last, as you can see. You know, I used to be fairly handsome. But as you can see, it doesn't last. The beard is gone. Wrinkles are coming. Right? But a woman who fears the Lord will be greatly praised, rewards her for all she has done. Let her deeds, deeds publicly declare her praise. Amazing. Amazing. You know, each time I read through this, I get goosebumps because it's just amazing. Amazing. That's all I can say. Make sure you like and subscribe. Comment. Share. Thank you for helping me to reach a goal of 500 subscribers. So forth. Peace out. Love you guys.